Mode mixture. Mode mixture is the idea of borrowing a chord from a parallel mode. By parallel mode, I mean the modes that start on the same root note as the key you are in, as opposed to the diatonic modes. The diatonic modes all belong to the same key and have the same key signature, and thus they all contain the same chords, just in a different order. The parallel modes all share the same root note, but do not share the same key signature and thus have different chords within them. You take a chord in the key you are working on and swap it out for the same number chord in a parallel mode. For example, you're in the key of C major and you want to change up a subdominant chord. Instead of using the F major 4 chord, you could borrow the F minor 4 chord from the parallel minor key. An important aspect to remember is that mode mixture changes the quality of the chord, but not the function of that chord. But what makes this different than modulation? Mode mixture is usually very brief, just a chord or two, and then the mode switches back. It is done to create a new color and not a new tonality, usually. Some exceptions to this later. Which chords are the most common to borrow? The most common form of mode mixture is borrowing from the parallel minor mode when you are in major. The chords that are most commonly borrowed are the chords that contain the flat sixth scale degree. The flat sixth scale degree pushes us towards the dominant more effectively than the natural sixth that happens in major. An example of this can be found in Clara Schumann's Piano Trio. The key here is D major, but the second chord that is given is E half diminished. Normally in the key of D, the two chord is E minor. That two half diminished is borrowed from D minor, and the B flat flat six gives us more pull towards the dominant. Another great example of this is the epic ending to the Star Spangled Banner that is commonly used. There are several artists who have done this, but Whitney Houston at the 1991 Super Bowl is probably the most memorable. The key here is A flat major. We move from the dominant chord, and then instead of moving back to the tonic, we have a deceptive cadence to the flat six. A deceptive cadence is when a dominant seventh moves to a six chord instead of the tonic, tricking the ear. This flat six is borrowed from the parallel minor key, which then moves to the flat seven, which is also from the parallel minor, before moving to the tonic. It is also fairly common to borrow the parallel tonic minor. Okay, but what if you want to borrow from major when you are in minor? This is less common than the other way around, but it does happen. The most prominent example of this is the Picardy third. A Picardy third is ending a piece that was previously in a minor key on the parallel major key. The Sarabande from Bach's first French suite is an example of this. This piece is in D minor but ends on a D major chord after the final cadence. This was very commonly done in the Renaissance and the Baroque era because the minor chord was seen as less stable than the major one, and it gave the piece a stronger sense of finality if it was ended on a major chord. Mode mixture can aid in modulation by acting as a pivot chord to help smooth the transition to distant keys. A pivot chord is a chord that belongs both to the key that you are in and the target key that you are going to, and it's used to help start the modulation process. The jump from C major to E flat major would be jarring to the ears, but it can be smoothed out with some mode mixture. In C major, we can use that F minor chord as a pivot chord to E flat major. In C, the F minor serves as the minor four chord, but in E flat, it serves as the natural minor two chord. This chord then moves to the B flat seven dominant chord in the key of E flat and then tonicizes E flat major. Okay, but I want to borrow from the other modes. It is possible to borrow from modes that are not major and minor, but we usually run into some issues with the analysis when we do that. Let's take a look at all the possible chords that can be formed from all seven parallel modes. First thing that we can do is take out all of the repeat chords and leave only unique chords that are not already in C major or C minor. So you can see that a good chunk of the chords are already covered by the major and minor modes. And the thing about the diminished chords is that they function as dominant chords, not as subdominant or tonic chords. And remember, mode mixture changes the quality of the chord, but not the function. When you see a diminished chord outside of the key, usually it is not an example of mode mixture. It is an example of something else going on, such as a secondary dominant.
So we can get rid of those examples as well. Those D flat major chords that our left should look familiar, that's the Neapolitan chord. The G flat major can also go. G flat major does not contain the leading tones, so it is no longer a dominant chord. The chords that are left could be considered genuine mode mixture from an outside mode. They are strange chords in the context of the key, but they do follow the definition. Thanks for watching. If you learned something or found this interesting, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. Also, if you like what I do here on the channel and would like to support it, please consider checking out my Patreon. Link is in the description.